I'd like to begin this week's pastor's video devotional with a story from when I was a kid, probably around nine or ten years old. I was over at my friend Brian's house for a day of hanging out when we decided to go outside through the front door. I remember standing on the front stoop and I looked to my right and there was this cat running, tearing after this small furry thing that it was chasing and both of them were headed straight for me. What happened next is part of our family lore. Just as they were about to pass by at around 60 miles an hour, the small furry thing ran up the inside of my jeans pant leg. It got lodged somewhere around my right knee. And when I tried coaxing this little lump down with my hands, it only tried to go further up. Thankfully, it was gripping the inside of the denim instead of the skin on my leg. Eventually, I was able to work it downward until just for the briefest of moments, there was this little brown and white chipmunk on the top of my sneaker, and it quickly took off like lightning. Looking back on it, if it weren't for the timely escape up my jeans pant leg, that wide-eyed, panic-stricken, running full steam chipmunk would have fallen victim to the cat who was right on him. In that terrifying moment for the chipmunk, as providence would have it, a way out was provided through a person who for him was present and available at just the right time and in just the right place. And the threat to his life went flying on past him none the wiser. I'll bet you have friends like that who were with you at the time when you needed them most. Have you ever thought of yourself as a friend like that for someone else? The ministry of presence for desperate people can sometimes be the difference between life and death. Proverbs 17, 17 says this, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. There are so many today who may appear like they have it all together, but really are not doing well and in a time of adversity. The perceptiveness of a friend or a brother can sometimes, in the power of the Spirit, see right through the masks that people wear. And I'm not talking about the kind that may help keep us from accidentally spreading a virus we may not know we have. They may not necessarily need a superhero, just someone who is interested and available. We can be available through text messages, phone calls, and especially lately video calls through FaceTime or Zoom or another platform. You may already be thinking of someone whom you think may need uh, to receive such a call to find relief from the isolation and discouragement that has gripped so many uh, throughout this time of the virus outbreak. Or you may be thinking, you may be the one who needs such a call where Christian faith and friendship can enter into this experience and offer us a lift when it's most needed. I'd encourage you today to take the time to reach out and make those life-affirming, life-giving connections where you can find them, for you or for them. It is needs like these and times like these that have led me to think about how the discipleship ministries of Christ Church can Best reach out to people who may otherwise be disconnected to Christian fellowship and learning. And what better way to encourage people today than by helping them to connect with meaningful life conversations that center around God's truth and community. Both the human connection, even if it is through a screen, and the truth of God's inspired and living word are such sources of strength for the existential crisis that so many seem to be going through right now. That is part of the thinking behind presenting a new opportunity for Christ Church, both for regular attenders and those who used to attend and moved away, as well as those who may have never attended here, but are looking for the kind of thing I'm talking about and can even connect with us remotely. And so later this week, Christ Church is opening up registration for the New Testament in 90 days. This is a shared community learning experience from the eyewitnesses of Scripture 
about him who came to save us and is Lord over all. Amen. This may sound like a lot of reading, but you won't be doing it alone. And the reading plan that starts June 15th amounts to only around three chapters a day for six days a week for 90 days. And that is with no readings on Sundays in case people need a chance to catch up from time to time. There will also be resources to support you on the journey through the New Testament, such as the Christ Church Pastors videos and the question and answer commentaries, a New Testament 90 Days Facebook group where others can share in questions and insights, and also, yes, the option to be in a weekly online virtual small group with others who are doing the readings just as you are and to talk with them about what you're learning and questions you may have. It's going to be fun. I hope that you'll consider signing up later this week or at least sometime before June 10th so that we can set up the groups in advance. If you know of others who are signing up that you want to be in the same group with, you'll also be able to indicate that on the online form. If you choose to do this with us, please also be thinking about and praying about who and how God may be calling you to invite to do this with you. I believe there are many uh, filled with panic today and are looking for a lifeline, a friendly invitation from you to participate in the New Testament in 90 days with the option to get in an online virtual small group may be just the right thing at just the right time for them and God could use you. 1 John chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 says this, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard and we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, friends, that's the invitation of these disciples and the ancient followers of Christ to hear what they have seen and heard and to have fellowship not only with them or among us, but with God and his Son, Jesus Christ, who is mighty to save and ever-present with us. Won't you join in this community learning experience in fellowship?